I have to say that what's what I've seen in the past you know, since October the 7th has totally changed my outlook on what's happening in, in Palestine. I had no idea of the extremity of Israel's kind of ethnic cleansing. I mean, it just seems so apparent to me now that this is what, what's happening. Um, yet before October the 7th, if you had used the word Zionism and been critical of that kind of ideology, you would have been in, in hot water as you yourself were, um, David. I mean, you've been yeah. criticised for using the what term Zionism. What What's your view on, on how things have changed? Do you think that your outlook on, on what's going on with the, the sort of inevitability of... of ethnic cleansing with Zionism. I mean, is, is that what we're talking about here? Uh, well, yes. I mean, th thanks for having me on, Crispin. I mean, look, I I've been saying this about Zionism for a while, um, that Zionism is an inherently racist ideology. Uh, it, it requires the ethnic cleansing of the Palestinians in order to create the Jewish state in the first place in 1948. And it requires the ongoing ethnic cleansing of the Palestinians, as we've seen since 1967, with the uh, development of settlements in the West Bank, uh, in Gaza, and then the withdrawal from Gaza. And it, of course, still requires, as they as they say on the streets in uh, Jerusalem, a second Nakba is coming. They, they openly discuss it as being a catastrophe for the Palestinians. And we've seen, of course, haven't we? All of us have seen this. The stream, the procession of genocidal statements from not just settlers, not just ordinary Zionists on the ground, from the, the top leaders throughout Zionism. We've seen them talk about raising Gaza to the ground, not a stone upon a stone will be left, uh, uh, human animals, and then inhuman animals. I mean, a huge procession of these statements, which are genocidal. Uh, I mean, you know, there isn't any doubt about that. And of course, yeah. what's happened is that as a result, we have... When we say something like that, what's happening in Gaza is a genocide, people don't look at you as if you're mad anymore. They see it. I mean, everyone can see that this is a genocide. But that doesn't mean that there are no costs for speaking up still. I mean, let me, let me, just to, to finish this answer, let me give you the example of the, the newly erected, elected um, rector of St Andrews University, a, woman, a black woman called Stella Maris, who is being elected by the students uh, and has been attacked by the university for sending an email in which she used the word genocide. And I, I mean, I, I mean, it's truly, truly extraordinary. It's, a, it's a, you know, it's a kind of mirror image, if you like, of what happened to me at the University of Bristol. Let me just read briefly. This, the university is under senior management state. It said, we are utterly dismayed that the rector on this occasion put her right to freedom of expression ahead of her duty to represent all students and to be concerned for their welfare. Now, in which other circumstance would the, the, the feelings and the welfare of the apologists and promoters of genocide be thought to be the most important thing, and not the actual victims of genocide, who are, of course, as we all know, everyone in the world knows this, the Palestinians. It's extraordinary that we have this... Uh, so do you, can I just come in? So you think the yeah. word genocide is, I mean, that, that uh, as was said about Gary Lineker's linking an article, uh, a, 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 an interview, mm. um, the word genocide a few, like a couple of months ago, would have been seen as outrageous to, to have said something like that. Yeah. Um, but but now that's changed. I mean, that's commonplace that's right. to people that's to right. use that. Um, yeah, so how, how, how has it been for you? Do you feel that you're kind of calling this out for quite a while? Um, and, and now you're kind of being, you know, you've been shown to be to be right, haven't you? Well, I mean, yes. I mean, look, Zionism is and always has been a genocidal, racist ideology. The the creation of the state of Israel was, in in the words of the IHRA definition, a racist endeavor, uh, and, and that's always been clear. But the question about whether you could say it or not was was what was contested. Now, when I made my statements, I didn't use the word genocide uh, ever in the statements I made. I talked about the racist ideology of Zionism, and I was sacked for saying that. 
Uh, my case is still going, of course, and we, we won't see the the judgment on that till probably the new year. But uh, that's what I was, I was effectively sacked of being an anti-Zionist. And that 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 sort of reaction that you get in public institutions like St. Andrews University and in many others is that you have that there, that there are two sides here. There are those who believe in genocide and support the genocide of the Palestinians and those who think genocide is maybe a little bit wrong, right? Now, that is not how it should, public institutions should respond. In any other case, in any other case of racism, let me just even quote the University of Bristol's own website. The University of Bristol has a statement written by its then two most senior officials on BLM back in the day, where, where it talks about the need to dismantle and eradicate racism. Now, I didn't even use the word eradicate in relation to Zionism. I used the word dismantle. But in every other racism, we understand that racism is something we oppose. Our society opposes it. It's against the law to be a racist, uh, e.g. in the Equality Act. But, but yet, when it comes to Zionism, people some, somehow can't see that Zionism is racist. And the reason for that, if I, if I just finish, is that, that Zionist ideas have gained traction throughout civil society, throughout the public public realm, and people are either uh, uh, paid up believers or they are scared and go along with this because they somehow muddle-headedly think that it would be, it would be wrong for the, to the Jews if if we oppose Zionism. No, I mean, Zionism is a form of racism, which uh, uh, which is not only held by Jews, and, uh, and it's not, and all, all Jews are not racists, you know, as we see with the, the Jews on the uh, the uh, yeah. Palestine Solidarity marches. I mean, when, when the, the campaign against anti-Semitism, which we'll talk about in a minute, talks about Jews not feeling safe in London, well, you know, there are thousands and thousands of Jews coming to say not in our name uh, at the Palestine Solidarity demonstrations. This is a tweet from the uh campaign against anti-Semitism, because they, they are the people who are behind today's march against anti-Semitism, which says stand shoulder to shoulder with British Jews. Um, and, and if we look at the, the campaign against anti-Semitism, this is what they tweeted on um, the 7th of November. Uh, we've written to Suella Braverman, whose support for our community at this time has been rock solid. Given the failures of the Metropolitan Police, we've asked her to consider military reinforcement of police and an exceptional use of her power under Section 40 of the Police Act. I mean, the fact they were calling for the military to come in to stop people demonstrating, I mean, this group just seems horrendous. Yeah. I mean, this is, a, this is said to be a march against anti-Semitism. It's not. It's a march for genocide. It's, a, it's there to support the killing of Palestinian children. That's that's the purpose of the march. And anyone who goes on it is doing so, I would say, consciously. They're there consciously to support the killing of Palestinian children. The CAA, of course, was set up uh, um, some time ago to campaign against Jeremy Corbyn. And it's, of course, funded by uh, um, organisations which are uh, extremely close to the uh, Zionist regime. The, the Jewish National Fund, for example, one of the four national institutions in Israel, uh, is a key funder of the CAA. It's, a, uh, it's an Israeli foreign policy instrument, and that's what its, its purpose is. Uh, and you can see that from the, their statements about, you know, Jews don't feel safe in London. Uh, you know, I mean, Jews are on the march. Jews feel safe on the march in solidarity with their comrades against what's happening in Palestine. It's, a, it's an absolute joke. This is a, an organization which has charitable status, which uniquely, as far as I understand it, it, it is not required to name the trustees, uh, either the trustees of the charity uh, on the Charity Commission website, or indeed the directors of the company, uh, company site. I don't, don't know of any other organisation which is permitted to do that. Uh, and they keep the, the names of these people secret because they're uh, they're up to no good. And of course, that means there's no accountability because when they, they talk about their, their, the payments that they make and uh, the, 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 the resources that they get from other charities, they don't have to, even to disclose that because their, their names of the people are not public. So this is a, an organisation which should be shut down forthwith. Uh, along with many other Zionist organizations. It's, a, it's an organization de dedicated to promoting racism and indeed genocide.